Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Victorville Planning Commission meeting. I will uh, call this meeting to order. Uh, roll call, please. Chair Kurth? Here. Vice Chair Porter? Here. Commissioner Dew? Present. Commissioner Marsh? Here. Commissioner Uber? We'll start out with our uh, invocation uh, led to us by Commissioner Porter, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. We have a set of uh, uh, meeting minutes from September 12, 2018 that need to be taken care of. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Dew with a second by Vice Chair Porter to approve the minutes of the September 12, 2018 Planning Commission regular meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ooh. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, we have a uh, number, a handful of agenda items tonight. If, uh, if you're first time here or not familiar, uh, the way this goes is we'll take each item one at a time. We'll usually get a staff report on that item. Um, we then open up a, uh, the public hearing section so the folks in the audience can come up and, and testify on that item. Then we close that down and we bring it back to the commission for deliberation and a vote. So let's start with uh, item number one, staff report, please. Thank you, Chair Kurth, fellow commissioners. Um, item number one is a site plan and conditional use permit for a wireless facility located at 17099 Gas Line Road. Um, the applicant's actu actually requesting a continuance to the November 14th meeting on this item. Uh, we recommend that you open up the public hearing and uh, continue this item to November 14th. Thank you. This item is... Uh being asked to be continued, but we'll still open up the public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to on us on item number one? Okay, seeing no one, I will uh, leave the public hearing open, and I'm going to continue uh, make a motion to continue this item to the no November 14th, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Second. We have a motion by Chair Kurth, with a second by Commissioner Marsh to keep the public hearing open and continue case PLAN 18-00040 to the November 14th, 2018 regular planning commission meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Agenda item number two, please. I also need to be approved by the property and the boundary. I would like to, since this is 428 acres and I've been 30 years, I'd like to sit in and look. I say it. Uh, Take a seat down in the audience. Yes. Thank you, Chairman Kurth. Uh, item number two is case PLAN 18-00046. It is a general plan amendment zone change and specific plan amendment to update the Victorville Old Town specific plan. Uh, the area encompasses 428 acres bounded roughly by the Mojave River and Stoddard Wells Road to the northeast, 11th Avenue to the east, Mojave Drive and Verde Street to the south, and Interstate 15 to the northwest. Uh, the item before you tonight, um, it's quite a big item, there's roughly 700 pages, but 
this is a culmination of uh, two years of effort. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge the Planning Commission for their effort. Um, every, all of the staff members up here have been working on this for some time. Um, and actually, uh, a lot of this started with uh, the uh, initiation from uh, Old Town uh, residents. Uh, so I'd like to acknowledge the root organization. Um, this started two years ago, like I said, uh, actually from a, a strategic planning session of the city council uh, where members of the public gave input, uh, members from Old Town gave input. And um, what spurred from that was uh, the city council giving direction to proceed with the specific plan um, that's uh, before you tonight. Um, we've had uh, three public workshops. Um, all three of them have been held down in Old Town. Um, but this is the first time, though, that uh, from the feedback we've received, we've uh, created the plan. So the, this is the first time that we've noticed and uh, assembled the complete specific plan. Uh, we've noticed to over um, 700 property owners, um, all the property owners within uh, the specific plan and the property owners within 300 feet have been notified. Uh, we've also noticed in the um, Valley by newspaper, um, also the people that attended the workshops uh, that gave their email address, we've also given them notice uh, through an email distribution list. Um, the item's been placed on our city website along with all of the um, environmental documents. Uh, so that's just to give a uh, recap of kind of where we're at today. So th there may have been uh, residents that weren't involved in the workshop workshops but may have been noticed uh, via um, this latest round of notices and so we want to make sure that we capture some of the that feedback tonight um, and before um, well just to give you a, an understanding of uh, how, how we'd like to present the item today uh, Mike's going to give an overview of um, the full specific plan going through each of the chapters um, and then we're here to just answer questions, receive input um, at the end of the meeting. If um, if you're comfortable with with the proposal, um, we have uh, provided an action item where you could take action and recommend um, uh, to the city council uh, for their approval of this. Um, but right now, I'll just hand it off to Mike so he can go through uh, some of the particulars of the plan. Yes, thank you, Mr. Webb. Uh, I'm Mike Sarzinski. I'm the project planner for the Old Town specific plan. And I just want to add on to um, s Mr. Webb's comments. Um, we also went through an environmental process with this uh, project uh, with the state. It went very well. Uh, we just got one comment from one state agency, and they were very, very minor. So I just want to add on to that before I start on the plan. I'll give a, a brief overview of the specific, specific plan and some key points. Scott mentioned uh, it expands the specific plan area, the current specific plan area, from 173 acres to 428 acres. And that extends from Mojave Drive to the Mojave River, I-15 to Stoddard Wells Road, and it includes the uh, Mineral Bridge. Plan increases density. It adds mixed use with ground floor commercial and up to 35 units per acre. It adds live work and multifamily zoning and that is to uh, support the Old Town commercial. The plan also slows down 7th Street, slowing traffic by adding street parking, bulb outs. This increases the safety, increases walkability for Old Town. And also, the plan also creates a Route 66 identity through standards and design guidelines, signage, including murals. It also preserves Old Town creates protection for historic buildings and places, and sets a process for certifying new historic buildings, blocks, or districts. I'll give a, a brief chapter overview. Um, chapters one through three, introduction, opportunities and constraints, and the vision. This describes the opportunities such as Route 66, the Mojave River, the grid pattern of Old Town, and the constraints such as vacancies and homelessness, as well as the vision. Our vision is a safe, walkable, cultural, rich, and Route 66 heritage old town. 
Uh, chapter 4, the land use chapter, chapter allows for flexible land uses while protecting the storefront, spur spurring development, and encouraging the reoccupation of the vacancies within Old Town. In chapter 5 and 6, standards and design guidelines. This establishes the framework for building siting, parking, signage, and has clear but reasonable design guidelines. Chapter seven and eight, public improvements, circulation and infrastructure. Uh, these describe the improvements in Old Town. The, cities, the city will be installing parking on 7th Street, eventually moving the railroad crossing to 7th Street, improving intersections that meet 7th and D, and as well as improving the intersection of D and Stotterwells Road. The implement, implementation chapter includes an action plan set by priorities short-term priorities, zero to three years, mid-term, three to six, and long-term, seven years plus. There are no exact dates of installation. However, uh, the city does have short-term goals. Again, the implementation dates are not set, but we do have short-term goals in Old Town, and that includes lighting, on-street parking, bulb outs, an updated archway sign, which is for right, and funding opportunities, such as facade improvement program. That um, brief overview of the plan, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Mr. Gangler to discuss um, parking on 7th Street. I know that was an issue for folks. Thank you. One of the changes that we are proposing in the new specific plan is to convert 7th Street going through Old Town uh, from uh, Forest to uh, almost all the way to D Street to uh, instead of being two lanes in each direction, it would be one lane in each direction. And there would be on-street parking. There would be parallel parking adjacent to the curb and there would still be uh, turn lanes at the intersection, so you could make a left turn at the intersections. And uh, so we've already done a, a layout. We know it would fit, and we know it would work as far as the traffic. It could handle the existing traffic, and for some years uh, could handle a little bit of traffic growth. So that's uh, one, one uh, thing we're proposing. Uh, right now it's just in the plan, and it would have to uh, go forward with the specific plan, plan approval and ultimately be approved by City Council. But um, we uh, we also looked at the uh, angle parking option. Uh, it would not fit within the existing uh, curb to curb width to have angle parking on both sides of the street. Um, so we didn't really pursue that option further because it didn't make a lot of sense to have angle parking only on one side of the street. So we're proposing to have instead parallel parking on both sides of 7th Street. And that completes the uh, staff, staff report. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, any uh, questions from the commission uh, for staff at this point? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, the parking, was is this supported by a study that was done? Was there more than one study as rec recommended by a firm that we contacted? We uh, hired Albert Grover and Associates to prepare the traffic study that supported this specific plan. And they looked at the existing traffic as well as traffic into the future. And uh, so we're confident that we could make this conversion on that part of 7th Street and it would, would handle the traffic adequately. Is there any involvement from Apple Valley or concern from Apple Valley traffic coming from Apple Valley? Um, I don't know. I don't know how far these comments have been routed or if we've received comments yet from other agencies outside of the city of Victorville. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Oh, uh, while we're on the uh, discussion of the 7th Street and, and the parking, um, should this uh, be approved tonight and then should it be approved by the city council, is there any estimation on the, the – uh, implementation and the start of any of these improvements in the near future? Oh, we, we don't have a schedule yet uh, because we haven't uh, uh, 
budgeted for this m improvement yet. We wanted to make sure we went all through the steps first. So um, I, I, I don't think that it would be completed in this fiscal year, which ends in June. My thought is by the time we got council approval, designed the project, budgeted for it, went out to bid and constructed the project, it would probably spill over somewhat into the next fiscal year. But we what don't is, really so have a it schedule is yet. Pretty much immediately after. If the, they wanted after us the to pr proceed with the project and they wanted to fund it, we could, we could proceed with it. Thank you. Yeah, just to add to that, so um, staff's been talking. So when this item gets to uh, the city council level, we we plan to also have it accompanied with um, the street improvement uh, proposal. Um, so so concurrently with the with the uh, specific plan, the council could give direction on how quickly they want to proceed with with the actual street improvements to bring on street parking back. Um, also the uh, archway sign, and we're also working on the lighting as well. So those are all three items that we're working on um, hopefully within this next year. Uh, at this time, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, the public hearing for uh, for public comments. I do have two cards here. Um, the first one I was handed is uh, Jennifer uh, Nari. <coughs> Hello. Good evening, Planning Commission. I'm Jennifer, a longtime member of Revive Our Old Town Root Coalition. It's been almost three years since we first attended a city council meeting and spoke on behalf of Old Town. We didn't know what our goal was at first. All we knew was that we didn't want Old Town to be forgotten about anymore, any longer, and that we wanted a change, a positive change in our part of the city. With our historical Route 66 pathway and museum, plus all the historical points of interest, this part of the city is forever going to be the heart of, the, of this city. Thank you all, City of Victorville staff, for, for that, or oh, city staff that was part of the process of the revision of the Old Town Pacific Plan. A special thanks to Sophie and Mike and Scott, and, um, and as we also wanna thank you for bringing those workshops down to Old Town so that the residents um, can attend. It was, we, we really appreciated that. And, and we also want to, to thank, uh, we also wanted to thank you for you know, answering all those numerous questions and requests that we have made upon you in the planning department. And, um, and also for um, using the data that you gathered to help shape the, um, new, the newly revised Old Town specific plan. I'm asking on behalf of the residents of Old Town to you, the city of Victorville, to continue to keep us, the community, informed on the process of everything as it moves along the impl implementation process. We would also like or request that we be included in establishing an Old Town Association if one was to be established. We are strongly dedicated to establishing a safer community for the residents and visitors of Old Town, and we want to continue to help shape the neighborhoods for a renewed, nicer, more welcoming, and safer community. I want to end with a couple of quotes. The first one is from Edward Everett Hale. Coming together, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is a progress. Working together is, is success. And then another one was from Justin Trudeau. It says, we need to make sure we all are working together to, con to change the mindsets to change attitudes and to f fight against the bad habits that our society that have as a society that we have as a society, I feel like the like the first quote is like our we would continue working with you the city and with us you know to the for the benefit of the community of especially the old town residents and I want to thank you all for having bringing this opportunity for us to be here today and. Um, and the, the future of Old Town Victorville. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being involved. I have another card from uh, uh, Richard uh, Matthias.
Hi guys. How you guys doing today? All right. Um, I'm actually very happy to stand in front of you right now because this has been what 20 years in the works. I'm very happy to see something happen in downtown Victorville. I mean, everybody you talk to, there's been Roots is great. There's been a program before Roots in downtown that worked on downtown, and nobody believes that change is happening. And I'm actually looking forward to being part of the PBID. So if we, if a little bit of twinkle, a little change happens now, and more people believe that change is happening in downtown Victorville, and they'll see it physically, then therefore I, I believe that it'll, it'll, it'll grow. It'll, it'll, it'll come back to life. And I thank you guys just for all your hard work and what's happening. This is just awesome. Thank you guys. I am hoping it passes. Please, please let it pass. Thank you for your comments. Okay, is there uh, anyone else here that would like to speak to us on item number two? Go ahead. You could uh, state your, your name for the record. Uh, Paul Smith. Uh, been in Victorville for over 60 years. Uh, I have property between uh, the Or Grand Wash and 6th Street. Uh, I have owned property at the river for over 30 years. My family can correct me on uh, anything I say. Uh, I'm 89 years of age. And I do have historical property in Victorville that I feel is historical that has been uh, shoved aside by those that have been assigned by the city at some point uh, to uh, take care of the property uh, coming off of, of, uh, of Highway, uh, well, Highway 66 at that time. And uh, it was when the freeway was extended to uh, the uh, the Mojave River, and uh, then they took a left turn and took the river route to Barstow and uh, through all of the little communities on the way. Everybody considered Victorville as the, and you have it in item. I just brought a few files of the boxes of files that I've had since uh, we've come to Victorville. I teach history and polit political science uh, at the college for a period of time. I've had uh, interviews with uh, over 100 people that have been in Victorville since the turn of the century and uh, we have an author of a book that deals with many of those people that still have a great interest in Victorville and investments in Victorville. And uh, it seems as though uh, the boundaries that were set for Old Town Victorville, of course, was, you're all familiar with the fact, and I think the people should become familiar with the idea that the Old Town Victorville is not an east-west, north-south uh, development. And that uh, the streets in Old Town Victorville, uh, they do not conform to the, uh, the geology or with the sun and all. Um, these, so that there's been changes made, I felt like we had historical property when we uh, purchased uh, the property from the county uh, at the corner of uh, Verde and uh, and the uh, and Center Street where the Center Street Park is. Uh, they've changed all of that on our side of the street. Uh, the uh, and they changed it, of course, because of water problems and other things. We have property, of course, that they were dumping the sewage uh, into the river for two years 
and uh, of course we used it for recreational purposes and our kids uh, we've had a lot of uh, tree houses and other things and the neighborhood kids and everybody would come uh, it's a little different now not everybody can live in Old Town Victorville uh, if you live on the wrong side of the tracks when we first came uh, if you're on the river side of the tracks uh, you were not allowed to go on the other side of the railroad tracks uh, to use the public uh, uh, things. Uh, so I've, lot of, I've seen a lot of changes and, uh, and I have quite a, a library uh, with books and other things related to that. I've ne never been really, I, I, I've been friends of members of the city council. I served on the city council. I was chairman of the Mountain Desert Planning Agency when we had our offices in uh, Bishop and we have moved them now and most of our employees are in Apple Valley. Um, we've been involved with horses uh, for the kids and uh, other things and all the neighbors in town. Uh, anyway, uh, I've been a pastor here and as a pastor, some things disturb me, uh, not knowing the restrictions that were on the blacks and the Mexicans in Old Town. Uh, we felt that we got that changed uh, when they voted on the lighting district or formed a lighting district. Uh, we were able to appoint a person, a black person, on that board and they got lights they, uh, they, along with the rest of the city that had them for a couple years. Anyway, I have a heart uh, for uh, progress. I, uh, my family is very much involved in the property that we've acquired uh, that we felt was important. Uh, water is another issue, and the reason I have a friend that gave uh, a section of land to the, uh, to the water district in Victorville. Uh, we've had a uh, wedding reception there, but you have to park on, uh, you have to have special permission to use that park. That funds had been given to develop it. The water was then purchased by a group of men in Victorville. Uh, well, they talked the city of Victorville into buying property uh, all along the river and supply the water for uh, the city of Victorville. Uh, they not only supply it, but they own, uh, they, they dictate the water issues that have developed uh, below the lower narrows and uh, to provide water, good water for Georgia Air Force Base. Uh, the city now owns the, uh, that process and the water that is used in the factories from China and other places in building, uh, building their, uh, uh, their what do you call them? The, uh, anyway, I got, a, I got some of my own. But the, uh, the uh, what is it? Uh, well, anyway, the computers <laughs> and all of the electronics. You know, I don't want to interrupt you, because <laughs> I know you came here and spoke <clears throat> a few months ago on the Old Town area to us. Did, is that correct? I did. Yeah. And I learned a lot about you then as well, and, and I know your, your stories are fascinating, and the history can probably go on forever with your files and in your ma mind, and I really appreciate well, I it. Well, I, I feel the need at this point is my problem, is I feel the need of having uh, legal uh, representation. And uh, we've had, uh, I've 
my brother put me in charge of 1,800 churches in the United States, and I've written several books on, uh, that are published in Russia, uh, China, uh, and in uh, several African nations. And, um, but I, I'm an, uh, I feel like uh, in order to get my graduate work approved when I had left to do uh, work in other universities and overseas, uh, I had a hard time getting uh, my uh, papers to be able to teach in California, but I did it at the University of Cal in Riverside. But anyway, I'm just an old man that is troubled by my younger brothers and what's happening uh, and the way it's happening in the community of Victorville. I'm familiar with the railroads. My grandfather was uh, vice president of the Southern Pacific Railroad in San Francisco. And, uh, the, uh, and that, that comes from his father who was uh, the judge of the Philadelphia Federal Court. And when you appealed from that court, you went to the Supreme Court. Uh, but anyway, just little things that, that make me concerned about where we're going. Where are we going? And uh, I'd sure like to, uh, I have some ideas of good ways of going. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to us on agenda item uh, number two? Yes, please come forward. <coughs> Hello, my name is Wendy Chavaria, and I just have a few questions that, um, you know, please excuse my ignorance. I haven't been to these meetings before, and I don't fully understand what I was able to capture from your presentation. Sounded wonderful. But um, I wanted to access specifically on the properties on Tracy Street. People who are homeowners there, will we be forced to sell? I don't, I don't think so. There's nothing... That no. she's going to need, need to worry about on that on that end of things. Right? No, there's no there's no plans for for the city to uh, take over any property. Um, if anything, it allows uh, for more density um, to provide more rooftops to support more commercial in the downtown core. Uh, but it's okay. it's not it's not anything where we're we're planning to demo any blocks or anything like that. No, it's I it's, see. A, it's strictly a land use plan. Um, that gives standards for development on that on the site. Uh, all the existing uh, uses on site can continue to remain. Um, it doesn't prevent you from continue to, uh, if you have a shop, to con continue occupying that shop. Uh, if I you understand. have a residence, um, if you choose to sell to a developer that wants to redevelop the site, that's that's your sh choice. I see. Thank you. And my second question is: Is how do you guys um, feel that this is going to affect the homelessness issue in, in that area? Do you think it'll affect it in any way or help or not help? Any ideas on that? Well, the uh, part of the plan is uh, strictly geared towards uh, safety and uh, by improving lighting, um, there's implementation plans to improve uh, the amount of um, officer patrolling in the area. Uh, so we're trying to bring, uh, bring the beautification of Old Town back as well. So to eliminate that blight, um, improve safety by having more patrols, improve the lighting. Uh, so we think the, the plan, um, if implemented, would actually deter uh, homelessness. Um, there's also provisions to allow for homelessness services um, through conditional use permits in the area. Um, so there would be um, services to help get uh, people that are, um, you know, homelessness back on their feet. I see. 
Thank you very much. You're welcome. And if you do want to uh, see more information, you know, more so than just this PowerPoint, the the entire plan and all the maps and 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 um, you know all the uh, analysis can be found on the uh, city's website under the okay. planning department. Just go to the planning and building, and I think it's it's kind of right there on the home page. They have uh, the specific plans, and it'll say Old Town. I uh, see. Specific plan, and it, it's all right there in case you want to do some reading. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. So I have a question. As an investor, uh, <coughs> give your name for the oh, I'm sorry, Chef Basil. So I have a question. We've had property here for over 20 years. We still have our rentals over there. So if nobody wants to, if nobody wants to, those buildings down there want to clean up or anything, and they just, you know, like some people who invest, they just want their buildings to stay there, you know, till they wait till somebody, like, eventually buys them out. What happens is, is there a possibility to, like, somebody like me or our group or our firm could come down there and just buy some buildings or maybe buy up the whole area and then redevelop it? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, this, it's... Because I am of, interested. Most I mean, of the land uh, throughout, throughout Old Town, a lot of it is, is privately owned. Now, I know the city owns a number of parcels throughout there that they're working on you know redeveloping or waiting for more of a master plan um, but i don't think there's anything stopping investors as a matter of fact i think we encourage that if investors came to old town and said i want to buy up uh, some of these buildings i want to rehab i want to rebuild according to the plan and i want to spark new life into old town um, that's kind of where it starts i believe because some of those buildings have been there for a long long time and I know that some of the, the old money, as you guys call it, you know, sometimes people sit on property and they hope that maybe somebody will come and buy them out. But what happens if no one comes? I mean, I'm interested. My family's interested. But what happens if no one comes? What's the city going to do then in regards to, in other words, I'm trying to ask, can the city force a land order, a land owner who has a building on there who's not doing anything? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. How can, how can the city force a vacant building who's been there for like 10 or 15 years to do something? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Within the plan that you guys are willing to do. Yeah, I think, I think, that, I think you're probably talking code enforcement. I mean, if, if somebody had, uh, had, a, had a building that was out of compliance or, or dangerous or health, safety, and welfare issues, <laughs> code enforcement would address that, that property. Okay. I, maybe I'm not saying it right. Let's say a person has a building. Let's say the, the burn building, that, let's say the building next door to the burn building. It's been there for a long time. Or the building across the street that are boarded up and everything's perfect, no code violations, no nothing, but they're just sitting. What happens then? Commissioner Kurth, I can take a stab at answering that question. So to answer your question, can the city force the yeah. property owner to do something with a property that's compliant, has no code issues. No, we cannot. We respect and honor private, yeah. private property rights. Um, but our larger goal is to, to put in place this plan as well as various city improvements that help facilitate the true private investment that needs to occur. Um, and as Commissioner Kurth mentioned, we are actually a major landholder as the city. Oh, um, it was via our old redevelopment agency, and so we will have properties available for private investment, and the, the, um, the intent there is to sell some of our property, work on, on joint That's ventures, uh, public-private partnerships to. on our property, and then help spur the other private investment because, you know, I'll be completely honest, it, 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 the city doesn't have a pot of money um, specifically to spend in Old Town. So we really have to do what we can on the road projects, on the street lighting projects, okay, infrastructure yeah. projects, those types of things that help and can be matched with private um, investment. Um, some may come through the formation of, the, of a business improvement distri district like has been discussed with many of the property owners over there recently. So it really is a true partnership of city and private investment. But to force a property owner or to um, to talk about taking property like the previous speaker um, mentioned, those are not our plans, and quite honestly, that's not our role as a city. Well, I don't mean like force my but um, but you have a plan here, Mr. Wright, and if there's a building sitting there, 
I'll give you an example, like the old theater. We've been wanting to buy that, and we've been trying for months to find out who owns it. And then all of a sudden, we saw a for sale sign went up last week. How, how do I get a list of all the properties that's available in that section downtown? Who do I go to? Where is it available online, properties that are available in old downtown? Well, if it's not city-owned, then that would be private market, the way you find any kind of real estate. There are listing websites, um, local, lo broker. local real estate firms that you could contact. Okay. Do the research. Uh, typical to if you were looking for a house. Okay. And the reason why I decided to come up and speak, this man has a lot of history, and finally I just decided to act on it. So thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else from uh, item number two? Uh, seeing no one, I will um, close the public hearing, uh, bring it back to the commission for any questions, discussion, or motion. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, this is obviously a project that's well needed. I believe it's going to be a benefit to the city as a whole. Uh, so I would like to make a motion. Um, a motion to recommend that the city council adopt the attached mitigated negative declaration and adopt resolution number P-18-060, recommending city council approval of the general plan amendment, um, amendment portion of case number PLAN-18-00046 uh, and adopt resolution number P-18-060. 6-1, recommending city council approval of the zone change portion of case number PLAN 18-00046 and adopt resolution number P-18-062, recommending city council approval of the specific plan uh, amendment portion of case number PLAN 18-00046. We have a motion by Commissioner Marsh with a second by Commissioner Dew to approve case PLAN 18-00046 as condition. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries with Vice Chair Porter and Commissioner Hoover absent from the dais. Thank you. Chairman, yes, I'd like sir. to ask the uh, Planning Commission one question. Uh, I'd like to uh, continue making minor non-substantive changes to the plan before it goes to council. And that includes just photographs, uh, graphic additions that were included in the environmental, nothing of any substantial. Um, yeah, but I, I think, you know, in my opinion, any of that kind of information add on that, that enhances this plan without you know, there change. would be scope. I, no be content fine. or scope change whatsoever. Just cl As clean up. Okay. No, that, that I think that would be a benefit, and um, so that's really good news that this passed. It's moving on to the um, to the city council for their for their vote. Um, I also want to thank the staff. Um, anytime we have a specific plan like this. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of analysis. It, a lot to put together um, to then have it make sense to the general public for for however however many years that this will be in place that we were working off of this document. So thanks for all that hard work. Um, also like to thank the citizens, the businesses, the residents of Old Town, uh, especially the organization Roots for the involvement. It's been kind of a long long haul, but this is just once again another step to keep moving forward in the best interest and and uh, preparing for you know uh, good things to come in in Old Town. So thank you all. Moving on to item number three, please. Thank you, Chairman Kurth. Item number three is case PLAN 18-00043. It is a variance to sign standards of the Victorville Municipal Code with an environmental exemption to allow for a 90 foot tall freestanding sign adjacent to Interstate 15 that exceeds height, sign height uh, provided by the Victorville Municipal Code. This is located at 16251 North D Street 
also Route 66. What's before you tonight is a variance. Um, the current code requirement uh, for a site of this size adjacent to Interstate 15 allows for a 40-foot sign uh, for uh, sites that are located adjacent to Interstate 15. The subject site has had an off-site sign for numerous decades uh, that was recently taken down uh, by the Caltrans improvements um, that are occurring uh, as we speak. Um, that sign was approved back in 1966. Uh, I couldn't find record of the approval of it, um, but it's been referenced in our in our, our documents throughout. Uh, it's been acknowledged, but we can't find the actual <laughs> approval of it. Um, but anyhow, that that sign's been removed. Uh, the applicant has been um, you know working with staff uh, for some time at finding a better way to provide signage for uh, the site and uh, the reason why a variance is proposed is because the site um, does have some unique special circumstances and that's what uh, the planning commission needs to consider when they're cons when they're uh, reviewing a, a variance um, the special circumstances in this case is that the uh, parcel is located uh, below the freeway grade um, and that's unusual for most of Victorville where uh, most of the properties are located at grade um, so they can uh, a normal property owner can uh, put up a 40-foot sign and it would provide proper exposure uh, for their business in this case it um, a 40-foot high foot sign would not provide that adequate visibility from Interstate 15 um, on the uh, it will actually in the staff report there's a graphic on uh, page um, 750 uh, about a year ago the applicant um, put a crane on the site uh, and raised it to 90 feet uh, to visually show where that sign would be located and as you can see, uh, it is below the hillside grade, and it's actually lower than the uh, prior sign that you could see on the hilltop there. Um, 90 feet um, is what staff recommended that the applicant come in at, mainly because the freeway grade is, is about 36 feet above the, um, above the site grade. And the, the advertisement sign of the ARCO extends to 77 feet. So there is a roughly 40 foot difference, uh, which is about the 40 foot sign height uh, difference. So uh, we would think that a variance relating it to uh, having the advertisement of their business being approximately 40 feet above freeway grade is um, appropriate. Uh, would provide signage for the business. Uh, there is um, an area above the 77 foot height that is reserved to identify a Route 66 um, and Victorville, uh, but that does not uh, count as tenant signage uh, and does not calculate in the, the overall sign height. Um, so with that, um, Stafford recommends approval as conditioned. Uh, we did receive one um, complaint and staff did provide a memo of uh, a summary of that discussion. Um, and I'm not sure if that, uh, if that person would, would be here tonight to explain more, but we wanted to provide you that information. Uh, so with that, we're available if you have any questions. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Question. Um, on that sign, because right on that property, right behind that, uh, right behind those, uh, the gas station, kind of up on the hill, there's a there's a home, and then the sign's going right behind that. So it's going to be a light up sign. So it's, I mean, is there going to be, is it going to affect? I mean, is there people living in that house? Oh, okay. So then there is the. Um, yes, I. I c 
maybe someone from the audience can explain, but it's since it's a single family home, uh, we don't carry occupancy uh, documents to see if it's, it's currently occupied. Uh, what I would like to um, acknowledge is that per code, um, the, the applicant could today come into the city and ask for a 40 foot sign by right. Um, and as staff, we think that that would actually impact this particular neighboring uh, single family home greater than if it was at the current proposed 90 feet uh, because it would actually be right in oh. their line of sight. Okay. Then with that, um, I'll go ahead and uh, open up the public hearing. Um, I'm first going to ask, is the, is the, uh, the applicant or the sign company or any of those individuals, would you like to speak to the commissioner, give an overview at all, or would you like to? Uh, not unless you have anything to say. I know there's a, a neighbor that would like to speak as well. Okay. Then let's, um, then let's uh, move on and, and um, you folks uh, can come on up. <laughs> we may have some questions for you, but welcome. Good evening. <coughs> yes, uh, we are here to oppose the commission to not to grant the variance for the 90 feet tall sign right in front of my house. I wish the reason was only that it's going to be an eyesore, but that's not the only reason. Watching this illuminated sign and living underneath 24 hours a day, seven days a week, year after year, is a total torture to my brain, and I cannot accept that. As it is, we have millions of cars coming in and out all times of day and night, releasing fumes, carbon, very bad for the health, probably even cancerous. Now he wants to attract more traffic because he wants to make a big, huge sign so the entire freeway on the 15 freeway, traffic on the 15 freeway can see and all come to this gas station. Uh, doesn't make any sense. <coughs> this, um, the owner of the, this outfit, this Arco outfit, should have a little bit more decency and respect for its neighbor. At least talk to them, see what exactly what his idea was and what his plan is, if it's okay or if it's okay to do that. But at least have a small discussion. Hey, listen, this is my plan. Is it okay? Because I know you guys have a house here, and um, but I wanted to go ahead and put a 90-foot tall sign. I hope you don't have any objection to that. And but never was contacted or even considered. There is a people live in the back, and or this is a this was actually a um, a single family residence, a single family area, which converted afterward into commercial. So that does not, well, of course, it becomes a non-conforming residence, but you shouldn't, but city, by calling it, hey, you have a non-conforming residence in the commercial area, that's not, that's not fair to say. My house was there before the gas station was there. And uh, <clears throat> when he was expanding his gas station from a four cars aisles to 24 cars aisle, he 
I did not come here to the, to the city public hearing to oppose it because he promised he is going to plant a whole bunch of trees in front of my house. And he never did it. Instead of, instead of doing that, he went ahead and dumped all the concrete that came from the old building, put it behind the retaining wall. And uh, when I complained to the city, the city says, oh, it's his property. He can do whatever he wants to do. I don't think anybody has a right to dump concrete on even if your own property, uh, if it's causing a problem. Now we cannot even put the trees over there. And uh, so he's just, uh, he's just totally, I'm totally opposing it. And I think um, my uh, reasoning is very fair. And, um, and I would hope this, the commission accept, understands what I'm trying to say and deny that variance is definitely going to devalue my property. And um, if there is anything we need, of, it, this, to, this needs to be further investigated. And, or maybe I should, uh, we should negotiate two neighbors, say what is the best thing we can do to help the situation so that both parties agrees to that instead of fighting here in, in, before the city, before the commission. That's all I got to say. Thank you for your comments. Um, could you could you state your name for the record? Uh, Ayik Ahmed, uh, a last name A H M E D. Do you have any other further comments? Okay. Yeah, you received it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak to us on item number three? Uh, seeing no one, I'll bring it. Uh, I'll close the public hearing, and bring it back to the commission with any uh, questions or deliberation. And yes, Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to know was um, the um, concerns of the resident was this ever brought to the attention of the staff at all? Staff really received a call, I believe, late last week. Um, as part of this public hearing, uh, we're required to notice the property owners within 300 feet. Um, so that that was the first time that staff had um, uh, a time to uh, interact with the adjacent property owner. Dialogue between the petitioner. To the best of my knowledge, it sounds like there's been um, a history there over uh, over the years of dialogue. Um, um, the the site was redeveloped sometime within the last 10 years uh, so that's what uh, the property owner was mentioning about the, uh, the trees and the block wall uh, so there is there's been some uh, dialogue there before I don't know if there's been any uh, dialogue regarding uh, this sign between the property owner and uh, the uh, property Chairman, if I, I may, I would like to, uh, I think we all read something regarding the speed rail system um, that's going to go through, probably be involved with 2022. So um, I will ask the en engineer, uh, do we have any updated information regarding that, how that affects traffic on the 15 or between the city of Victorville, Barstow, and Las Vegas? Uh, if we have any information on changes in traffic due to the project that's currently under construction? No, uh, I haven't seen any information on that. The, the project that's under construction right now, or it's more of an interchange upgrade project. 
So um, there are improvements to the interchange at D Street, E Street, and Stoddard Wells, and mainly the, the ramps, and then also some adding some extra lanes on D Street going under the I-15 bridge. But it that project in and of itself, in my opinion, wouldn't really change the volume of traffic. It would just improve the operations at the interchanges. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I, I have uh, just one, one clarification question. Um, Scott, you had mentioned uh, the uh, redeveloped properties redeveloped about 10 years ago. Um, do we happen to know when the, when the property became commercial property? Like, when did this come to, come to light or would have been able to have the approvals to be a, a commercial? Our records show that there was a gas station there dating back to 1966 when that when we had record of that sign at the location up on the hill. So there's been that offsite sign until about a uh, sometime within the last year when Caltrans uh, took that sign and, and removed it. So the original fuel station that was there could have been built before 1966. Yes. Yeah. It Obviously, took before <coughs> that it was the zone. Yes, it's been commercial for some time in that area. Yes, I don't. Ha I don't have that information. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, that would date back to when it was under county, county jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I will look for a uh, a motion. Well, I got a comment. Yes. You know, he's allowed forty foot, without, um, with an without anything. He's allowed forty foot sign now. The gas station, right? That is correct. Since he's over two gross acres, uh, he would be allowed a 40 foot uh, on site sign. And a 40 foot sign would be how far above the freeway? Four, Any idea? Four feet. According to this diagram where the old sign was in his house, uh, a 90 foot sign is quite a bit higher than the house is. I'd rather see a 90-foot sign higher than the house than a 40-foot sign that he's going to look at. I mean, I, I, I feel for the homeowner, but I also um, look at reality that he can put a 40-foot sign up and it's going to block the house anyway. So I, I really am torn with this because I, I would hate to see a sign in front of my house also but it's also a commercial area there so I guess why that's why we're up here trying to make decisions right yes sir um, one more question that I was going to ask earlier I just remembered um, just for my knowledge this this is a variance and is different than the Roy Rogers one we dealt with last meeting the freeway oriented sign Correct. But similar in concept that we made, we did make a finding and a justification that the sign was so far down in a hole that it needed to be up to make it worthy. And so we gave that distance from the top of the bridge up. And is that kind of theoretically the same thing we're doing it, here? It is, yeah. That was the rationale we, we um, worked with the property owner on uh, as he put this proposal together. Thanks. Chairman Kurtz, uh, I'll find the project category exempt for CEQA Section 15.311 Accessory Structure and adopt Resolution P-18-054, approving case number PLAN 18-0043, subject to attached conditions of approval. And there's a variance that someplace here that... Uh, Resolution P number 1804 includes conditions that will assure the variance shall not con constitute a grant of special privileges, including language that specifies the approval is based solely on the subject site, unique location with varying topography and adjacent interstate highway with a higher elevation than the subject site. We have a motion by Commissioner Huber with a second by Vice Chair Porter to approve case PLAN 18-00043 as conditioned. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries with Commissioner Due abstaining. Now he also can appeal this to City Council if he wants it. 
take this by the right? Yes, the appeal would need to be filed within 10 days of this action. You understand that? You can appeal this to the city council. Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, no, if you if you you would come to see the planning department here here at the city to start the appeal application and they will give you the uh, procedure that when it goes to the uh, council it would go to the uh, city council they would be final yes 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 I'm sorry everyone has the right to appeal a, a decision a formal a formal appeal according to the uh, municipal code all right I'll uh, move on to item number four please thank you chairman Kurth fellow commissioners item number four is case PLAN 18-00030 it is a site plan and conditional use permit with a categorical exemption to allow for the installation of a 79 foot tall monopine telecommunications tower on an undeveloped area of property occupied by a church. This is located at 17288 Started Wells Road. Uh, the site is uh, proposed at the Emmanuel Temple Church. Um, it's on the southwest corner of the site, which is not uh, being occupied currently by the church, uh, but it's in their future expansion area. Uh, the site's also located adjacent to uh, Grady Trimmel Park, which has a large uh, pine tree um, hedge along the north side of that park. Um, the applicants provided uh, necessary uh, propagation studies to show that uh, coverage is needed in the area. Um, staff supports the proposal and, and the uh, disguised uh, monopine installation um, as conditioned, and we're available if you have any questions. Any questions of staff? No. All right. Uh, thank you for the staff report. I will go ahead and open up the uh, public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to us on, on item number four? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. Project categorically exempt for suggested new construction or conversion of Second. Approving the site plan portion of case number all conditions and listed. Second. We have a motion by Vice Chair Porter with a second by Commissioner Dew to approve case PLAN 18-00030 as conditioned. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item number five, please. In item number five is case PLAN 18-00038. It is a site plan and conditional use permit with an environmental exemption to allow for the expansion of an existing non-conforming vocational training program and daycare for adults with developmental disabilities within a warehouse space located within a property zone industrial park district. This is located at 15387 Shalame Road. The project, um, actually the, the business was occupied back in 2000, received a conditional use permit approval uh, to use the, the front uh, 3,300 square feet of the property uh, for their operations. Uh, they eventually received in 2004 um, a conditional use permit to expand um, into the remaining 3,300 square feet. Uh, but did not make the improvements and that entitlement lapsed. Um, the applicants requesting to actually uh, finish that improvement that they started back in uh, 2004 
um, and so staff's uh, recommending approval as it was approved back in 2004. Uh, this would increase the uh, number of clients from 45 to 60. Uh, staff believes that there's appropriate conditions there to uh, mitigate any impacts that uh, would be on adjacent properties, and we're available if you have any questions. Questions of staff? Hmm. I'll go ahead and open up the uh, public hearing on agenda number five. Anyone here on five? Uh, seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion uh, that we find the project categorically exempt under Section 15301 um, of the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, and adopt resolution number P18 P-18-058, approving the conditional use permit portion of case PLAN 18-00038, subject to the attached conditions of approval, and adopt resolution number P-18-059, approving the site plan portion of case number PLN 18-00038, subject to the attached conditions of approval. We have a motion by Commissioner Marsh with a second by Commissioner Huber to approve case PLAN 18 00038 as conditioned. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, at this time, it's uh, it's time to open it up for uh, any general public comments. In compliance with the, did I miss one? Thank you. Sorry about that. I uh, I had my uh, stuff out of order here. Uh, I missed item number six. Um, looks like the applicant is requesting a, uh, a continuance um, of this item. Uh, so I will open up the public hearing on number six. Is there anyone to speak to us on six? Seeing no, uh, no one, I'll keep the public hearing open. I'll continue this item as a motion to the November 14th, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Second. We have a motion by Chair Kurth with a second by Commissioner Huber to keep the public hearing open and continue case PLN 17-00031 to the November 14, 2018 to regular planning commission meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> motion carries unanimously. Okay, there's not a number seven, is there? <laughs> okay. In compliance with the Brown Act, it's necessary for the Planning Commission to make available time for members of the public to address the Planning Commission on items of interest that fall within the Planning Commission's subject matter jurisdiction. We're going to ask that the comments are be limited to three minutes. Is there anyone to speak to us um, tonight? And at this time, uh, Commissioner comments. I uh, just wanted to t uh, say, uh, tell the staff thank you for, I attended, uh, they sent me to the um, um, the American Planning Association uh, um, conference, learned an awful lot, um, uh, very information, a lot of information uh, came out, you know, information packed. Uh, one thing that, one thing that kind of, um, it was a re uh, kind of a confirmation for me is that they made a lot of references uh, to larger cities, but within those references, I, um, I was able to see that, you know, the city of Victorville, the staff and the, the city council and the planning commission uh, were on the right track, you know, as far as planning and uh, implementation and, you know, things of that nature. So it was a good experience. I just want to say thank you. Yeah, I was surprised that we only had that many people speak on Old Town. 
thought there'd be a lot of a lot of people in the audience that have property in Old Town, and they didn't. Evidently, you give a good presentation. <laughs> they must be happy with that. They plan. must be happy with the plan. Yeah, we, we fielded uh, quite a bit of questions. Uh, we fielded quite a bit of questions on the phone over the uh, last month. So that's good. That's good. Nothing else. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, also commend our staff regarding the work regarding the specific plan for Old Town. Um, I think it's impossible to make everyone happy, and maybe that's not the sole goal, but the sole purpose is to make sure that the city of Victorville is uh, prosperous and residents feel comfortable regarding safety and security wherever they live, whether it's Old Town or elsewhere throughout the, the city. And you do a remarkable job and get little credit for it, and I just want to commend you along with my colleagues. Second of all, I want to say that whenever there is a dispute, um, I really do look forward to those disputes or disagreements uh, to be um, aired prior to coming here. And uh, I don't know what happened in this particular case, but for the most part, generally, uh, those disagreements or um, those concerns are always addressed prior to coming to before the commission, nine times out of ten. So, thank you for that, um, and that explains my position. Thank you, and we had a good meeting. That's Thank why. You. That's why you upstate, huh? <laughs> Those, you know, I've been on the council planning commission a lot of years, and there's a lot of disputes over the 25, 30 years I've been on there. You have to make a decision, and you make the right decision, I think, uh, and then stick with it. That's my comment. I've never abstained in my life on a comment on something that's been critical. Any um, final comments from uh, staff? Okay, well, thank you all. Meeting adjourned. Good seeing you. Sounds like a, a great um, planning seminar. It don't need it. Was, it was. It, it was. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that it was almost information overload. Yeah, that, that's the sad thing. Is like it's all in a day or two. Yeah. You need more time to absorb it, but yeah. exactly. But you know, but no. it shows me that the city's on the. We're here to make a decision. Try to get more dialogue.